Hi everyone, this is Pablo aka Kaspav, and welcome to my official first poker vlog. I just got off from work, we're on the road heading to Daytona Beach for the Heartland Poker Tour. We're going to be on the road for the next four hours, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some poker podcasts, educate myself, and at the same time get in the zone. We're playing tomorrow at noon the main event and hopefully we're gonna ship it quick stop for some coffee Here. You know you're gonna be on the blog, right? <laughs> push it! Push it! Push it! Just uh, arrived at the Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Card Room. We're gonna go register. So we're starting in about uh, 10 minutes, 30,000 starting stack, 40 minute blind level. Let's see this setup. I think it's a little bit better, but you see I have a microphone here. I'm not using the microphone, the expensive microphone that I bought from my computer because my webcam is not working the way I want it. So I sent it back to Amazon to get a new one. Which reminds me, I didn't order my new one, which I have to tell my wife. She, she, she's my chief home officer. Whatever I need, she coordinates and makes it happen. Let's go to the hands. The first hand that I got engaged, uh, you saw it. Bart Hansen analyzed the hand. You saw our mistakes. And uh, after that hand, we got involved to a three bed pot with ace two suited where I three bet and uh, my, get, my C bet uh, gets raised on the flop, so we lose that hand. 
nothing exciting. Then we lose another pot with ace queen offsuit where the pot uh, where the board comes low and connected. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the color's range was stronger than ours. We lost that pot as well. Then uh, this hand came. Seven, eight of clubs from middle position. So I raise both blinds call. So the pot is at 900. The flop comes ideal. Eight, seven, three with two hearts. Small blind checks. The big blind leads onto us for 700. Now, uh, be mindful, this is the same guy from the ace five diamond hand uh, with nines that he hold nines and he now leads to us. And I said to myself, this is the perfect opportunity to get my chips back. Obviously, right? So I raised and I raised to 2100 and he called, which is good, right? The turn though was not the ideal. The turn was the jack of hearts. So now 910 got, gets there hard draw gets there and I feel pretty shitty but he checks when he checked the uh, in game and I think that's where one my, my mistakes happened I bet and I bet 3100 having in mind that if I get any resistance I was going to fold my two pair but I I didn't want to give any free cards for another heart looking back at it I think it, it, it was a big mistake for me. So I did bet and he called again. That's when I, f I felt a little bit better with my bet. It, it, it's like I bet and I regret it at the same time. The river pairs the three and now he leads. When he leaded, I said, there's no way I'm ahead. There's no way, but he lit so small. He, he lit for, for three, for 3,000 and I just had to call I mean who knows what this guy has maybe he has a you know eight nine or you know this some something to that extent and he just wanted to to throw a blocking bet so I did call not loving it but I had to and he shows quad threes so in a way we could have lost a lot more, but um, in reality, we should have lost uh, less. So that was my mistake. Next hand, I have 10-8 of hearts and I raise the button. The blinds are still 100-100, uh, but we have a crippled stack. We have 15,000 and I raise the button 300, small blind and big blind calls. Flop comes queen, nine, six with two hearts. Again, pretty nice flop. We have a flush draw and we do have a gutter ball. Small blind checks, big blind, which is a different opponent now, uh, leads to us. And I'm thinking to myself, what is going on with this tournament? I mean, you see leading all the time? Anyways, he leads for 700. This time, I didn't feel that I had a raising hand against um, uh, against his um, leading range, so I decided to just call. I mean, we can steal the pot later, right? Depends. Maybe we hit our magic uh, nine and uh, get him uh, to pay us. But um, small blind folds, and the the turn is the ten of diamonds. So now. We pick up um, a little bit of showdown value there, considerable. But he continues his aggressive line and he bets 1700. So at that point, obviously we're not going anywhere. I, I thought the best solution uh, is to call and I stand by that solution. So I did call. The pot is uh, almost 6,000 now. The river comes the queen of diamonds. And uh, I hated it, but I loved it at the same time because um, it reduces uh, the odds of him having a queen. But obviously a queen is in his range, yet he bets really small. He bets 2,000. So it was a very, very easy call for me. I call and he shows jack three of hearts. So good thing another heart did not come. Anyways, good hand. 
Then we lose, um, before the break, we lose um, a hand with the Jack-10 suited and a three-bed pot. And another Ace-4 um, suited hand where, again, I three-bet bet, and I uh, squeeze there and I take down the pot. We lose a couple hands with fours and threes where we do not flop uh, basically anything. And we win another pot with ace-10 um, of hearts on a queen-jack-9 flop. So not, not too much, but you know, at least it gives you the, um, an idea how many pots I got engaged and um, we're going to a break. Kind of rough uh, first three levels. We're down to 18, almost 19,000 from the 30,000 starting stack. Um, blinds are going to be 400, and I believe the big blind Andy is going to kick in right now. So we'll see if we're going to need a second bullet. Coming back from uh, the break, we pick up sixes and uh, we raise uh, the uh, the low jack. The blinds are 200, 300 with uh, 300 uh, big blind Andy. The flop comes. Queen, nine, four, rainbow. Against two opponents, I decided to check, everybody checks. The turn is a four, and that's why I'm um, presenting this hand, because I think probably that I should have uh, throw a protection type of uh, bet. But I checked, and both of them check. The river is a deuce. At this point, I do want to go to showdown. I check, hijack checks, the button bets and at that point, I was not last to act, so I decided to fold. The hijack call with a pair of fives, and he wins against a complete bluff and um, not feeling very good. Then I lose another pot with ace eight suited, where I C bet on a two club and one spade flop with all the intention of continuing my aggression if another spade came, but it did not. Uh, another club came and he leads to us and I had to release. I also lose another pot with fives where we do not flop once again, nothing. And um, we lose another pot with nine seven suited. And we are in the shoving phase and I shoved eights, pick up the blinds, and then this hand happens. I have ace of hearts, six of diamonds on the big blind. We have 9,000 and at this point we are basically want to either double up or rebuy. We're still in the rebuy period. So at least we had that. The blinds are 200, 400 with 400 ante. So something like the 22 big blinds. The hijack opens for a thousand and we defend with our ace on the big blind. The flop comes three, five, four with two hearts. We have the ace of hearts. So we have the back door flush draw and uh, open ender. And who knows, maybe the ace is good. I check, the opponent uh, thinks for a while and he bets a thousand. And I went all in. He snap called. Oh, Let's see what happens. The next hand that I got involved was uh, the hand from the pilot episode. If you haven't seen it, go back and see it. And then we go to a break. Let's see what I had uh, to say at that time. One more break, second break of the day. We went down to almost uh, seven, eight thousand, and um, we got a double up. And pretty much we are at the same spot like we were under after the first break. Let's see if uh, we won't um, have to rebuy. We'll see. We come back from the break with a little bit better psychology after our double up and um, 
We open King-10 off, we pick up the blinds, we open Ace-10, we get three bet, four bet, they go all in, we obviously we have folded, and uh, one guy had aces, and then we get a table change. Table change, uh, at last we pick up a premium hand, Kings, there was a raise, we raise, we go all in, nobody called. Okay, it is what it is. Then we get involved in this hand, which is really interesting. We have Queen-10 of diamonds. We have uh, at that point around 20,000 and the blinds are 400, 800 with 800 big blind. And the UTG Sindir, the UTG plus two, I said Sindir, which is in, in Greek. <laughs> so the UTG plus two opens for 2000, the cutoff, and the button calls, we call as well. Now we the pot is 9,200 at that point, okay? When we started the hand with 20. The flop comes ace, 10, queen with two hearts. We check, UTG plus two bets 5,000. I think it was 5,000. The button, uh, calls and there's only one move and that move is all in, all in. utg plus two calls really really quickly which i felt it that mm, i did not feel that good because you know king jack is in his range sets uh, better two pairs i didn't feel good when he instant call the other guy, he tank, 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 and he ultimately folded. And this is what we are against. <laughs> oh, from my head? Two players, one all into the turn. After winning that huge pot, I said, okay, our luck has finally changed. We three bet King Queen um, from cutter versus hijack. He f folds really quick. We open Ace Nine of Suited, we get the blinds. Then we get a table change. As soon as I sat on the table, I was in the big blind. So I said, oh, not running very well. <laughs> we post, we look at our hand, and we have aces. I said, okay, that's perfect. And we face a, a raise from UTG plus two to 2000. And um, right off the back, I said, okay, I'm new on the table, nobody sh knows me. I have a little bit of uh, aggressive look and I three bet. And quite to the large sides, just because of the his stack, us playing out of position, and we are kind of deep uh, since I have uh, almost you know 45,000. So I three bet to 6,500. He thinks a little bit, he calls. The flop comes king, nine seven rainbow so pretty good flop for aces and I down bet to six thousand he thinks a little bit he calls I said okay pro maybe probably he has a king here or he has us crushed completely either way I'm willing to go broke with this hand the turn is the five of hearts and uh, we do not have a heart so at this time, I bet 16,000, uh, setting up basically a river shove, and um, he thinks for a while, but relatively quickly, he calls, and I, I put him on, on, on a king-queen type of hand. I felt, it, okay, he has a king in here. Uh, maybe he called with king-queen, something to that extent, and the river, comes the three so a complete three of diamonds complete blank so i shove my remaining stack and he tanks for about two three minutes and he folded
but still it was a very good pot. We have almost 76,000 now and the blinds, uh, I believe they were just going up to 500, uh, 1,000. Before going to dinner break, we pick up fives, we, uh, nothing happened. We pick up threes, nothing happened. And uh, let's see how I feel after, uh, during the di dinner break. Okay guys, this is the dinner break and we have, uh, we ultimately reached 66,000 from 17 from our previous break. Uh, you saw that hand with Queen 10 that propelled us. We won the other hand with Aces and um, basically we're in a good spot right now. Uh, but the day is not over. So we come from uh, the break. We get um, a, a, in a pot with a OMC with Ace 2 offsuit where... Uh, and the reason I'm telling you this is it's important for the next hand. Uh, he, we concluded that he is a little bit of sticky and uh, doesn't like to fold very often. On this hand, we have queen 10 off from the small blind and I decided to limp and he checks behind. The flop comes 10, 10, four. And what happened was as I was going to bet, I was thinking actually of betting, he bets out of turn. So when I saw that, obviously I'm not gonna continue to bet so I check and he bets 1.2. I raised it at 4K knowing uh, that I, I'm aiming to all his fours. The odds of him having a four, I felt that it were more than, uh, than uh, having a 10. So I raised to 4K for value and he calls. The turn is a queen, so now we have a better pair. So if he had anything like a, a middling pair, like five sixes that did not decide to, to raise pre-flop, we got him now. So, but at the same time, we had to be a little bit careful, right? We don't want, uh, this is a tournament and uh, the rebuy period is over. So I check and he bets 5,000. Pretty okay with that, I call. The turn is a king and it goes check, check. I, I think uh, even if uh, you know we're ahead, um, I don't think we're gonna get called by worse. So I did check, he checks behinds and uh, we win. And he shows a four. So this was very exploitable play by my part. Typically, I would not play it that way, but because of all the circumstances that I explained to you, we made the most amount of chips. The next hand uh, was one that uh, basically affect our game uh, going forward. A really, really, really tight player. He, I didn't see him play one pot. He opened shoves 15,000 from middle position and his shove was uh, just under 10 blinds. We are next to act and we pick up 10s. I'm not folding 10s on a 10 blind shove no matter how tight the other guy is. So, but at the same time, I didn't want to come over the top because I felt that only better hands are gonna call us. But by us calling, I felt it that something worse might shove or call. I doubt some, somebody would call, but would come over the top. So the small blinds goes all in for another 23,000 on top. We call, he shows small blind, shows aces. Yes, aces. And the initial um, guy had king jack and we lose a pretty good pot and our stack is crippled down to 27,000 if I remember correctly. Not looking good, but we're still in the tournament and that's the important thing. With a crippled stack and a crippled spirit, we are in the shoving phase. I shove jack nine suited 
we get called by ace 10 offsuit and this is what happened And we are back in the game. We have about uh, 40,000. We are on the big blind with 8 9 offsuit. Blinds are 1,000, 2,000 with a 2,000 ante. The UTG opens to 5,000. He gets two calls. And of course, I'm going to call. Flop comes nine nine three with the two hearts, if I remember correctly. So I check. UTG checks. One of the callers he bets ten thousand. The other guy calls ten thousand. We go all in. The initial better. Everybody folds except the last guy. He tanks, 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 and he called us with sixes. And we hold. Boom! 87,000 for Kaspav. After that hand, we lose a pot with ace eight suited we lose a pot with ace king we lose a pot with ace queen i said oh come on man what's going on then we pick up eights we have around um, 54,000, and the blinds are 1500 2500 with the 2500 ante we open uh, i believe uh, i was utg plus two we open to 6k and the button three bets all in and action comes back to us at that point when i raised i checked this hand uh, actually um, after the fact it was pretty close leaning towards the fold in game i tanked I looked at my stack, then I asked that guy, I said, how much do you have? You know, because I wanted to see what is he shoving there. He says 90K. So I immediately, I, I took out most of the stronger part of his range, meaning aces and kings, just because, and queens, just because I felt it that he would probably three bet to a more reasonable amount. So I called and he shows king queen off and we hold and our stack explodes at that time at least for my standards at that and we have 115,000 after that hand we pick up a queen 10 where we win the pot when we see bet on a jack 9 board we win with threes after we called in position and uh, versus a check we bet and um, we win a, another pot with a queen then we get involved on this hand with the calling station the omc which is kind of a very interesting hand blinds are up there are uh, two thousand four thousand for it with a four thousand ante we have uh, 113,000. We open a king jack um, from under the gun. The flop comes king 9 10. All diamonds. We do not have a diamond in my hand. We check, and the OMC who was in the button, he bets, and he bets 10,000. A call. I'm not gonna fold my top pair just of yet. The turn is the ace of diamonds, so four diamonds. And I check, as I would do with my entire range there, he checks behind. The river is another diamond, and I fire 25,000. 
thinking that um, I have more diamonds in my range from him and he didn't take that long and he called and I said okay we're losing but he had king seven no diamonds and we split the pot I was kind of surprised that he managed to call that because I did have a lot of queen of diamonds there but kudos to him nice hand nice call split pot though after that hand nothing much hand uh, happened i was pretty much card dead until the tournament director says three last hands for the day and on the very very last hand we pick up queens i have a stack of about um, 16 blinds more or less and um, I see only one move on the final hand of the day, and that was all in. Well, this is what happened. Come on. All in. I like my hand too. Last hand. Oh man. Oh uh, my <laughs> Uh, last hand of the night. <clears throat> oh. The walk of stream. Total of table 11 clearing. Last hand of the day. And uh, we got it in Queens. Versus kings. You may be nice. younger than me, more humble than me, but ain't nobody Anyways, got more hunger than me. Is what it is. When they gonna tell me what I'm gonna be, I blocked them out to the side of the beat. We were and a short riding, my mind reside on islands when I be riding, Something like riding, and now I finally find it. 16 my blind. I shut. Since it was the last game, I thought, you know, nobody's gonna believe me. That I just wanted to double up on me. Uh, but we. Yeah, she woke up with kings and game over, but I feel it was a good turning. And the field was pretty easy. And each table that I played were maybe two, three good players. The rest of them uh, were, you know, average and below. So it was a good, good series. Anyways, next time maybe things are gonna get better. But that's how it are. So see you guys. Hope you enjoyed. At least we get to eat uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, so we can uh, sweeten the bitterness of the loss.